Welcome to the Grappling We Re- See exactly. Grappling Rewind Podcast. Welcome to this week on the Grappling Rewind Podcast. On this week's show, we're gonna recap Fight to Win 117 in San Diego, California. We're gonna recap Subspectrum 8. We're gonna talk about a preview for Kasai Super Series 2, Jits King, and Sug 9. As always on the show, I'm your host, Maine, joined with my co-host. Austin. How you doing, Austin? I'm alright, man. How are you? You could not have said that more like more Monthan Austin. That is <laughs> I'm my part name. Robot. I thought you knew that. A, a little bit. So, Compared to uh, like you, Emil, and Josh, I have like the personality of like a peanut or something. I don't know. Yeah, you're good analyst though, so so that's why I like it. So Sweet. yeah, Austin's coming in to save the fucking day right now because Emil got caught up with some work stuff, and Austin was like, "I can do the show." So he's here. Happy to have him. Um, let's move to some news. So two big items for the IBJJF GP: uh, Luis Panza is going to replace Bouchesha, and Cyborg is replacing Leandro Lau. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed. I'm super bummed. I yeah, mean, I'd rather see Leandro fight, to be honest, but... Wait, Le- Leandro's the guy you're bummed about, not Bouchesha? Yeah. Really? Yeah, man. I, I'm a big Leandro fan. Like, ever since he kept jumping up weight classes and still winning, I've always been impressed with him, so... He's, what, what like four different weight classes? Yeah. And then Absolute or something? Three different weight classes in Absolute? Yeah, who else has done that? Well, the Absolute was a close-up, but yeah. I mean, the Absolute, I mean, yeah. It's, it, yeah. He's still on his way there. Nothing to take away from him, but... Yeah. So I'm I'm disappointed. That sucks. But again, there's still a dope ass bracket. Yeah, and for it sure. Should be um, just should be amazing matchup. So hopefully there's no more pullouts of the event. But um, we're still not quite sure on Gordon's knee. So uh, that might happen as well. Yeah. So in other news, Keenan started his own team. Uh, do you know what the name is? <laughs> it's something kind of obtuse, but it, I know it has the words American Jiu Jitsu in it. It's like and the, um, something like Legion. It's or something the, like I think that. it's like the Legion of American Jiu Jitsu or the American Jiu Jitsu Legion. I heard him on the, the Matt Burn podcast, which is his and Hanger's mm-hmm. podcast, talking about it today. And even he like fucked up the name. And after he fucked up the name, I was like, I'm not, I'm, I can't get it now. I'm assuming it's not American Legion and then Jiu Jitsu. So yeah, there's probably only a couple of combinations at work. So, so that's really all there is for news this week. Oh, another news. Uh, we got a new mic. So Austin is now on a new mic that should be a better mic. If it's not a better mic, I will fix that. Oh, I also ordered in a new soundboard. So we will have the ability to do more stuff with the podcast. Uh, it's been a fun week of purchasing stuff. Yeah, man, super professional now. Well, I wouldn't go that far. It's not. It's not <laughs> in yet. I got a shipment confirmation that it like it's ordered and it's on its way. And I'm reading in the manuals of like how to use the board. But um, yeah, so it should be a good week. Hopefully next week we're using that board uh, if I learn how to use it in time. So. Let's move into Fight to Win. Sweet. So let's move into Fight to Win. Recap. Fight to Win 117. This event paid a total of $38,336 in salaries and commissions and was headlined by Black Belt Kanan Duarte defeating, Guten- defeating Gutenberg Pereira via decision. That is a big payout for Fight to Win. I know all, all the Cali cards do really well, but that's a that's a pretty good payout. Yeah, I think in the commentary they were saying they gave a little bonus incentive. Of they, like- I think uh, Gamblers, I think Kevin Gallagher's organization Gamblers mm. Jiu-Jitsu uh, was giving away, I think for the main event and for the women's uh, co-main event yep. uh, I think it was a 2,000 if there was a submission in the main event and then 1,000 if there was a submission in the co-main event. I yeah, think they were only for right. submissions though. Oh, well so, then yeah, then that wouldn't necessarily, and I guess we'll get to this, wouldn't necessarily affect the bottom line as right, much. I, I, don't, I don't know. Actually, I think mm. I thought fight to win salaries are independent, but oh, okay. because they b- both payouts, both bonuses didn't get paid out because there was no submission. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I don't think it would add. Again, Cali yeah, always does well. Sure. So uh, let's move into this. Let's yep. talk about the, the main event, Cana Duarte versus Gutenberg Pereira. I think this is not for a title because Gutenberg just lost the title to Herbert Santos. Mm. So this would have previously been for a title because Gutenberg's held the title for a while now. And this is Duarte's second outing for fight to win. And... Uh, Looks good. This was this was definitely a bit of a slower match. Yeah, it didn't have like as much action as I kind of anticipated. Um, Gutenberg, I mean, Gutenberg typically is a much much slower guy. Like we've seen him in slow matches pretty much. We saw him take the take the title off Spriggs in a relatively mm-hmm. slow match. Like he's a really really good grappler. He's top easily top ten in the world in the weight yeah, class. For sure. But he's just he plays a slower game. Like I just really thought, I don't know. Even in the even in the match, it seemed like a lot of them. A lot of the movements they were doing were kind of like wrestlery, which kind of surprised me. Maybe not for Kanan, but it just seemed like a lot of like, oh, I'll shoot while a guy has a collar grip. And it's like, well, why? Yeah, it seemed was, like a lot of it, too. There was way more stand-up than I'm used to seeing from mm-hmm. Gutenberg. Like, I'm, I'm, maybe I could be wrong there, but I've, in the last couple matches I've seen Gutenberg in, he's really like plays from the bottom. Like, yeah. he's just slower. I mean, neither one of them could really pass each other, so that was kind of cool. Like you kind of saw the meadow on both ends, but it was still like I don't know, not my favorite match. It was a bit, it was a bit of slower of a slower match. Yeah, Keenan, Keenan, excuse me, 
Kanan won because, at least in my opinion, there's about six minutes in where he gets a saddle or 411 or honey hole or whatever you want to call it, the same movement. He gets that, and then he kind of gets that like a shoelace, Texas cloverleaf kind of submission attempt. Where he, you know, Gutenberg kept his, his other arm, his other sleeve, so he never really kind of got a really solid bite on it to really start. You never really with got it. to see this finishing mechanics. Yep. It. it was like starting to get set up. But right. it never really went past that. Right. So he uses that to sweep. And there's maybe like two minutes left. And uh, Kanan had a last minute, a steam lock attempt. And that was kind of all the action as far as like subs go. Yeah. So I think that's what he gets. I think those two things. That was enough. Really for what, sure. And in fight twin rules, submission attempts and mm-hmm. submissions get you, you know, get you the decision. So yep. he gets the decision. On to the co-main event, we have Jenna Bishop defeating Luisa Montero via decision. This is cool. Like yeah. I like I liked the Deli Heva work here. Um mm-hmm. Really back and forth. Again, my notes here has the thousand dollar put up for if there's a submission. Mm-hmm. The high levels, man, it's rare to see submissions though. Unless you got a guy like Lovato on your main card, or sure. you know, it's it is rare. Yeah, speaking of Delahiva work, that was really cool to see. It seemed like everyone who used Delahiva on this entire card has now switched from either collar sleeve to that pant grip. That seems yeah. super popular. That Atos uses a lot and AOJ uses a lot. Seems like that's that outside, the meta now. That outside knee pant grip is like mm-hmm. what everyone wants. And even they'll go kind of even lower, like mm-hmm. on almost to like the like almost cuff. the ankle, like the cuff, yeah, yeah, the cuff of the leg. But and it's really interesting. Like people don't, you're not seeing as much of that like top end. I'm not sure if people can't establish it as easily because no one's really willing willing to bend over that much to get it, or they're keeping kind of far out. But everyone's opting for that kind of additional point of control in the Delahiva there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you brought it up, I was like, oh man, that's spot on because that's what Montero used to sweep a couple of times. And so if you're kind of one of those new school guardy kind of of players, I would say check it Those out. Those new school guardy kind of players. This, yeah. is, this is honestly like a really good match for like Gi, Deli mm-hmm. Hiva. The motions are good. It's good technique. You see some reverse Deli Hiva thrown in there. And then you get to watch the entire thing happen. So the first kind of the sequence goes back and forth. And then you get to watch the same exact thing happen like three more times in the match. So mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a good match study because you just watch the whole match. And, um, you know, right towards the end, Jenna throws up like some more collar chokes from the guard and She's really able to take it on sub attempts. I yeah, think. for sure. I think there was a lot of cool moments where it seemed like Louisa was gonna sweep Jenna, and well, it she ended does. up in a scram. She does. Don't get me wrong. She had a she had a few sweeps in there, but it seems like there were a lot of scrambles by Jenna that put her back on top that I definitely wasn't expecting. She was scrappy. So oh, it yeah. was awesome. I was really impressed with the scramble work here. That was mm-hmm. that was like. She was down a couple times. I was like, okay, well, that's kind of the match. This is what it's going to look like. And she's able to get out, keep getting, and, you know, keep that action going. Yep. And it was – this is honestly, like, a really fun match to watch. Like, really technical. The speed was cool. There was, like, some nice explosive passing attempts with some, like, kind of more grindy passing attempts. Jenna throws some good, like, knee bar attempts off the inversion off of, like, the – um off of Montero going into the leg weave position. Yep. It was good. Overall, yeah, fun I enjoyed match. that match a lot. Yeah, so let's move on to the next match. Rolando Jr. defeating Sergio Rios via decision. That was fight of the night for the Black Belts. Dude, this match started off a little slow, and then... And sorry, it didn't start off slow. Like, Rolando immediately jumps for, like, a flying triangle at the beginning of the match, and then, they you know, gets to, like, a normal jiu-jitsu match, really good spider guard. Those are those spider guard matches where Rolando kind of keeps Sergio at the end of his grips and kind of goes for that, like, long, lanky sweep. Uh, mm. I was wrong. <laughs> I was definitely very wrong about this. Rolando moves and these guys push a pace from the beginning of the match at one point in this match there's like two minutes left and i was like oh my god there's still time (laughs) left in this match there's been so much like control and turnover and um there's a really cool tomanagi that rolando hits here like twice and it's it's one of those super high like like i want to say showy tomanagis but where they put the foot right in like the hip and the gut and roll them all the way like directly over and it's just Mm -hmm. a giant throw yeah it seems like with Tomonagi in general, as like a technique. It's like the better a guy is at posting or like like active posting with either his head or his hands, it makes the actual completion of the sweep or the throw look way better <laughs> because it's like, yeah. oh, cool, like he tippy-toed his way out of it but then missed that last little leverage point that kept him up. Dude, so then it makes was, it look so much more highly amplitude. Dude, he was up in the air. Like for both of them, it was just one of those like – it was one of those like textbook instructional Tomonagis where it was like, this is how you do it. You're like, no one's ever going to hit it like that. And he fucking does. <laughs> and it was super – it was like one of them was like in the center of the mat. I was like, Jesus. Um, there's a really, really cool sequence here. So Rolando keeps going for this um, really standard collar choke from the back. And um, eventually, like, Sergio has really great defense on this. He's able to get out. And the last, I think, like, 40 seconds of the match, these guys are, like, in and out of positions and, like, going for it. 
and it was deservedly fighting life for the black belts. Like it's a fun match. Definitely go back and rewatch this match. So uh, moving on to the next match, we got give me that name. Uh, Rafael Delina defeats Paulo Filio by armbar, and that was submission of the night for the black belts. This is just a really like relatively like standard door chalk arm bar. It's, I mean, the setup is pretty cool for it. Mm-hmm. Um, Raphael basically hits it as he is passing. Yeah. He sort of gets a knee cut. He shoots it through. And then he just like rolls Paulo over and kind of up to expose the elbow and the arm more. Yeah, it looked like it was almost going to be belly down because that was like the right defensive reaction by Aphelio. But um, it, was, it was really cool. If you really want to see a lot of like attacking knee sliding, this is kind of a good match to watch. Um Nothing that's like gonna blow your mind, but just relentless knee sliding and like relentless attacking of a guard until you finally get what you want, and then he he attacked right away. He attacked with the armbar right away. Yeah, and he finishes almost like almost like top side, and yeah, then he's it, able to kind of like roll over and finishes like on his on his chest or on his back. I forget. Yeah, it's kind of like one of those when you do when you're in side control and you put knee on belly and then you slide the knee on belly yes. up to their arm to their armpit. Yes, but it doesn't. It, it's not like he ended up directly on his back. It was like. Philo started to do the escape right away, and then they ended up in kind of an awkward spot, but he still kind of got the tap in the transition. Yeah, he got it as they were sort of falling over, Mm -hmm. but it was really cool. And again, I was trying to figure out why it was Friday the night, why it was submission the night for the black belts, and I looked at there's all these little pieces and little adjustments Mm -hmm. to get made. I'm like, oh, snap, like stuff I did. I didn't catch the first time I watched it because whenever we look at the submission the night for the black belts, Mm -hmm. I was like to go through and like look exactly like what's what Seth saw to why I got submission of the night. And I was like, oh, look at all these little details that I might have glossed over. Sure. And it was a really cool like textbook door chalk armbar. Yeah. So uh, next match, we have Barrett Yoshida defeating Marcus Norat via crucifix choke to the surprise of pretty much no one. <laughs> um, dude, Barrett sets up a fucking crucifix from the guard, from the bottom of, like, butterfly guard. Yeah, I don't think anyone's shocked that it was, like, this unorthodox sort of position that lasted for a super long time until he gets the finish. Well, Barry Sheet is known as a back crucifix guy. Like, mm-hmm. That's what he does. Like, that's what, whenever we see Barry win at Fight to Win, or usually whenever we see him win, like, that dude does something, he gets to the back crucifix, he rides you out in the back crucifix, mm-hmm. you roll and you invert a couple times trying to get out of it, you maybe get out of it once, he gets you back into it, and then eventually he either finishes with the collar choke or with the rear naked choke with the hand. Mm-hmm. That's what this match was. Yeah. I thought he was going to finish at one point. They had a cool angle where it looked like he was kind of like uh, separating his shoulder with like kind of the arm locky with your yeah. legs. Yep. I thought that was what was going to finish him. But, I mean, he was tough. Like, shout out to Norat for, like, gutting it out. But Dude, go back and watch the um, – at 325 of this match uh, in the video, not in the actual time but in the actual match video, you watch this dope setup that Barry hits from the guard. He's basically in butterfly guard. And then he, like, just traps the arm to get to the crucifix on, like, a tech up. It was ludicrous. Like, I, I assume this is how he does it before, but I've never I have never actually caught him doing this. Because usually his crucifix setups are so, like, quick and sneaky. Mm-hmm. It is amazing. As a butterfly guard player, like, I'm going to go back. and that's, that's why I specifically time stamped it in my notes. I'm like, look at that. That's amazing. And so, uh, yeah, 325 at that match. Go back and watch it. Barrett Yoshida is a is the best dude in the world at the back crucifix. Yeah. From an entertainment standpoint, this was my favorite submission of the night. I mean, it didn't win the award for it, but it was my favorite because it was so weird. And it's like, I like style stuff. Like, yeah. oh, I don't necessarily like 10th Planet that much because their style is something <laughs> I can't do. Not that no, no disrespect to them. I just can't do that style, so I don't like oh, study yeah, it. You don't find it as interesting to watch because yeah, it's not something that you But can, like, you a can do Latine is cool because that's like, a move specific, almost like a WWE pro wrestling. <laughs> like, right. this guy has a special finisher. Like, I like seeing stuff like that. So this is really cool. But you just can, you can actually do this one. So yeah, it's cool. exactly. Yeah, this is, that was, it was a fun ass match. So next match we have Alfredo Braun defeating Marcus Porter via decision. We have Paul Silva defeating Chris Stoltzman via triangle. We have Pablo Montavani defeating Andre pa- and Andre Pontes. Man, it is rough with the, <laughs> with the, with the fucking names tonight. Andre Pontes via knee bar. We have Victor Bra- uh, Barreto defeating Matthew Papale via choke we have peter frank defeating ricky nunez via armbar we have bruno oh man munduruka defeating marcelo luke lucena lucena by armbar it is about 11 <laughs> o'clock at night right now the show comes out in mm, 55 minutes it's my favorite i like to catch you late night so then that way oh i don't God. seem like a bumbling idiot because this is my normal time to be up because i barely sleep dude i can't do it man my <laughs> brain is fried like it's i'm trying to read names because like 
I don't want to. I don't want to put that evil on you. And <laughs> I'm not the name guy. You can do this, man. Man, Harlan Burke defeats Raymond Ron via toe hold. Toe fold in the results here. Um, Raymond Ron walked out with a fucking axe. <laughs> I missed that. That's dope. Dude, with a fucking axe, like a Viking getup, and then when when Harlan Burke beat him with the toehold, he gave him like a hatchet. Oh yeah, and I like think you said axe. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I sent that. I took a picture. I was like, "Look at this shit! Look what's <laughs> happening!" Like on the it was part like whenever this was happening, East Coast time. Like while I was still before like twelve thirty at night, That's I texted dope. everyone. I was like, "Look! Look at this!" I can't believe this just happened. It was so – it made me laugh super hard because uh, I don't – I didn't see where he got the hatchet from. I assume he just pulled it out of his gi at the end of the match after he got defeated and handed it to Harlan. He had a hatchet in his gi the entire time. He's my new favorite. I don't care who you are. If you're rolling with a hatchet in your gi, that's the dopest thing I've ever heard. That, it, that So that was just an amazing moment. I think right around here is where there was a brawl in the crowd Ooh. that uh, I think some, a, couple, a couple people got bottled in the face. Yeah. And, I didn't really see anything on the event itself, obviously, I but I heard other about match, it. I found some other footage, mm-hmm. um, about a minute and 50 second video of a dude like with a bloody face and head Jesus. like kind of being taken out. And uh, I don't know what's going on, but Seth got up on the mic and uh, was very cursatory mm. to the people. And uh, <laughs> then on Instagram later was yeah. like, you didn't even hit me good. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured he would jump in if something like that ever jumped yeah, off all an of event. Them, all of them, Detroit did, mm. he did. I think, um, I'm not sure if Evan did, I think. Yeah, it was it was, it was the videos there, and it's just mm. like, dude, composure for these guys to get in a brawl, like getting people out of their event, and then continue to run the event with like like it was nothing. You didn't even notice on the broadcast. Yeah, that's awesome. Had yeah, Seth I not said anything, I wouldn't have noticed on the broadcast. <laughs> so next match we have Sofia Nardano defeating Heather Wood via heel hook. We have Johnny Souza defeating Miles Lucas via decision. We have Gabriel Bergami 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 defeating Adam Mar. Marzen via decision. We have Higor Brito defeating Nasir Lionab via decision. We have Kuyo Tabankora defeating Vinicius Wong via split decision. Kevin Burbrick defeats Tom Galakino. That's not right at all. Galacino. It's probably Galicchio, but they missed a Galicchio vowel or something. Via decision. I'm missing like whole letters <laughs> in this. And then onto the black belt judo results. We have Gabriel Mendez defeating Andre Lokov via two Ippons. This is a fun dude. I like dude. Fight to win judo is it's always great. fun as shit. Gabriel basically both ippons. He starts off with this like really interesting like double collar grip, and then one of them he's able to hit like kind of a double. I don't know what the name of this throw is called. It's a double handed like drop seonagi as mm, Maruto under- seonagi. Maybe no, no, but it's because it's not. He doesn't go for the under on the arm. Like it's he does it with the both collars still. He doesn't let go of either collar grip. So it's like a mirrored collar grip. Mm-hmm. And then he just like drops for this. And I have no idea what it's called. Does it look like uh, like the train wreck? Or like the yeah, Adolfo but, Vieira throw? Kind of, but he like drops underneath like a Seonagi with both grips. I, I know a judo dude is just freaking out right now. He's like, yelling at us like, <laughs> man, There's somebody how do you who's not yelling know this? in his car right now on his way to work. So uh, he hits that. It's really cool. I can't do the throw, but it's awesome. Kind of like a Marote Sayonagi, but he doesn't let go of the grips. He does it with, like, both hands, and mm-hmm. he doesn't, like, spin the elbow, and he just does it almost, like, straight. Hmm. It's really cool. Just he uses this, but he times the stand-up on Andre beautifully here and able to get underneath him to get the throw. And then the second throw is basically he has that double-handed grip. He kind of starts to snap a little bit, moves in, hits a dip on Sayonagi to finish it off. Beautiful throws, like, nice technique. This is why I love fight to win judo. These guys come to bring it because judo fights are a super big deal, and so they come to get the submission. They come to get the, the ip on. So moving on to the brown belt results, we have Pete O'Neill defeating Victor Oliveira via loop choke, and that was submission tonight for the brown belts. We have Clint Felder defeating Alex Horse via armbar. We have Keith Krikorian defeating Dan Dykeman via rear naked choke, and that was fight of the night for the brown belts. And uh, it was a good goddamn fight. I am a fan of both these guys um, because they both come to bring the fight. Like, dude, Dan Dykeman, every time I've seen him on Fight to Win, the first thing he does is come out and throw a flying scissor takedown. Yeah. Like, that's what he does. Yeah, it was I think awesome. maybe in the Malachi match at Baltimore, he was in the gi. I don't know if he – I think he threw a flying triangle there because he couldn't do the scissor takedown. Mm. But like, Even almost, Fight to Win rules, you can't do scissor takedown I don't, gi? I feel like he did, but I don't mm. – I, it doesn't seem right in my head, but I've seen him do it a couple times at this point. Like <laughs> he just runs at you and he throws it. And the funny thing is, like he doesn't throw it as like a joke. He throws it like he actually got Keith down with it. Here, yeah. Here and uh, Krikorian is a monster. Krikorian's going to ADCC. 
Yeah. Like he got the ADCC trials invitationals. He, sorry, he got the invitation spot, the last invitation spot at under 66 because he came in second place at the East Coast and the West Coast trials for the 2019 ADCC. Yeah. It so, was dope. That was a sweet opener. And there was kind of a lot of nonstop action if you really like leg lock stuff. I mean, there, there were a lot of leg lock attempts. Yeah. So that was really sweet. Dude, at one point Keith has Dan like in a heel hook. Deep. And, and I was like, okay, he's got it. And uh, Keith's a good heel hooker. Yeah. Like, <laughs> heel he's hooker. got good heel hooks. He's got re- good rear naked chokes. And Dan, is just like, I was like, oh, he's going to tap him. And then you see Dan roll, like, very calmly roll, just start to clear the knee line, start to clear the knee line. And he's able to get out. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, Dan Dyfin low key is pretty fucking good. Yeah, he ate it and then was calm enough to get out of it, which is tough. Like, I <laughs> definitely have that mental block where it's like, Oh, cool. Like, one one hard gator roll, and then we're done. Like, if I don't get out of yeah. it, if I don't clear Dude, my knee, I'm done. Dykeman ate it for a while here. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, he's going to get his knee blown in half. No, yeah, he got the escape. And he's got to pack up the set for no sleep later. <laughs> yeah, that was sweet. It was super slick. And then Keith basically gets on top at one point and then does a really cool pass that we see Kukorian use a ton. Um, he goes, like, kind of uh, like a jumping over knee slide, and then he keeps the body lock, and he's able to get on Dykeman, uh, Dykeman's back. Mm-hmm. And then that's kind of all she wrote. Dykeman does really good job with, like, the pummeling of the legs, kind of stopping Kokorian from, like, his body triangle because that's where Kokorian works from. Like, yeah. that dude gets on your back with a body triangle. Good luck getting out. That's what we saw him use. That's what we see him use every time we cover Kokorian. Yeah. Like, it looked like he had a triangle locked, but then had his foot fish, like, kind of fishing under the the inside leg instead of like the outside of the leg yeah so it was, it was a heads up play dykeman did that on purpose like yeah, he was, yeah. the he commentator was, like, in the calls it out that dykeman does it on purpose mm-hmm. and it was uh it was good and then you know he he's in a rear naked choke rear naked choke super deep and i think okay he's finished and then dykeman's able to f- fight out of it and then keith has to go to the other side and like re-pummel the hands and eventually is able to get it like yeah it was a good hand fight up until the end dude it was a really good honestly the whole match through and through was good dykeman mm-hmm. has a really like a nice armbar attempt at the beginning like a good heel attempt at the beginning like this is overall like a really good match deservedly fight of the night for the brown belts go back and watch this match we're definitely gonna be seeing more of dykeman we're gonna be seeing more of Corian. he's on adcc and everything else he's been on like a three week hiatus we haven't seen him on something else yeah. so uh go back and watch these guys these are brown belts that will be doing more stuff on a bigger stage later so exciting next match we had david lee leaving yeah, Yi defeating chris ritchie via footlock we have michael egley defeating pj montano via choke we have richard lopez defeating robert ramirez via armbar we had chadwick roland defeating brayer grout via heel hook we have connor barrett defeating dan hopes via Ar- we have triangle arm lock. Uh, we have Andressa Moss defeating Rafael Gutierrez via decision. We have JJ Wilson defeating. Give me that name. Javin Coleman. Oh, that's that's that makes sense. <laughs> On the purple belt results, we have Joe Wingate defeating Michael Collins via heel hook, and that was Smith in the night for the purple belts. We have Javi. We have Javier. Javier. Uh, Zaruski. Zaruski defeating Diego Vasquez via decision, and that was fight of the night for the purple belts. We have Morant. Mariana Gill. Mariana Gill Gil defeating. Really? You want to try this, man? Joanna Scott Hi. via triangle. Chris Esparza defeats Adam Carcioni via choke. Elijah Thompson defeats Carl Boudreau via heel hook. Justin Pierce defeats Brian McMahon via heel hook. You're way better at this than I am. Like, hands <laughs> down, like, not even close. Why was I reading? Why didn't Finally you tell me this earlier? Skills, man. Before you're like, oh, just be confident. I'm like, I'm pretty confident. I'm reading them right. Anyway, Chase Matthew Parsons defeats Stuart Cole via guillotine. Matt Cox defeats Chris Deal via decision. Nicole Aguirre Almazan defeats Stephanie Fava via decision. Leonard Miller defeats Marco Martinez via decision. On to the teen results. Joshua Webb defeats Jacob Brown via ankle lock, and that was submission and night for the teens. Hey, you stole my shit there. Got him. God damn. Yo, uh, that was a good match. Uh, Jacob Brown is a is a really dope guy at Otto, so to see him get beat by Joshua Webb, that means uh, both dudes are real fucking good. Mm-hmm. Kay Fontilla defeats Zoe Childs via decision. And uh, she becomes the teen flyweight Nogi champion for Fight to Win. And that does it for Fight to Win 117 in San Diego, California. On to the next one. So on to a recap of Subspectrum 8. Uh, we're just going to recap the men's absolute final and the women's flyweight championship for this one because the event videos are just going up now and I haven't had a chance to watch through all of them but I have got a chance to see those and so I want to talk about Aaron Harris's finish versus Austin Baker because it is uh it is super nifty yeah it was really cool uh I'm not the biggest leg lock guy but it was like a really cool inside AG 
where he inverts. Did you just shorten Ashigurami? You're goddamn to right, AG I did. On inside You're AG. Goddamn right, Ashi, I did. the coolest school, dude in school today. <laughs> he hits an inside Ashigurami from the bottom there mm-hmm. and is able to turn him over. And I eventually thought initially once he turned him over and kind of came out the back door on it that he was going to go for like a bit, kind of a belly down straight ankle lock, but he was kind of like high yeah. on the calf, and I was like. Yo, there's no way and fuck he's yeah, he gonna re- get He readjusted that. to catch the heel hook, but I, I thought initially he was gonna go after the heel hook, but kind of belly back up so that he could like readjust his position. Yeah, that's position. what I thought too. That's what it looked like. Because whenever a guy has that like low calf position, mm-hmm. you think, okay, he's gonna use to adjust to something else, but he kinda like sat on it for a second, like like he was gonna go for the ankle lock. And I thought mm-hmm. what in hindsight what I think he was doing was he was kind of stretching his position out further to get even more kind of English and leverage on the heel so that when he did make the switch, he was even deeper in the knee line. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it was a really cool inversion. I'm not this is like almost outside my depth in terms of like how hard it is to do because I'm really bad at inverting and I'm mediocre at leg locks. So that was a really cool thing to watch. That's really funny. <laughs> I thought you just open on the podcast. Like <laughs> I'm good at this. If you compete yeah. against Austin you know what it is. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, really cool finish. And then I think the camera angle here is beautiful. You can see exactly how he transitions his hands, gets the heel hook. So Aaron Harris wins 1500 bucks at Sub-Spectrum 8 and is now the absolute champion. So moving on to the women's 125-pound champion, we have Miranda Maverick beating Joanne Chamberlain. What did I say? Beating or beating? I don't know what you just said, beating. but her name's Joni. Joni Chamberlain <laughs> uh, via points in not only overtime, like Sub-Spectrum, if there's – an even match, what they do is at the expiration of time, it is the first to score. So she's able to get on the back. There's a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of close guard in this match, a lot of mm-hmm. open guard in this match. There's some really nice dogfight positions. So, you know, good back and forth. It's very difficult because um, both ladies are wearing very similar attire. Yeah, they're both kind of wearing. I mean. Kind of all black with a few designs on on with their some, rash guards. With some spats. white with one leg that is slightly different. Uh huh. Yeah, so, it, um, it was tough to tell. Um, in some spots, kind of when the action slowed down a bit, it was easier to tell. You can kind of make sense of what's what. But yeah, in some of the scrambles, it was a little tough to follow. So uh, yeah, she gets that. She takes the victory. I think she went into a thousand bucks as well. So that's uh that's awesome. I love that Sub Spectrum pays out their their people. Um, their matches are good. They're on YouTube at the Sub Spectrum YouTube page. Highly recommend you go check it out. So on to our preview of Kasai Super Series in Orlando. This is the second Kasai Super Series event and happens on July 4th. Happy Independence Day. I have the day off. I work for the government. (laughs) It's pretty great. I'm super happy. I have all the days off. Do you? Yeah, I'm in the army, man. I don't know what that means. I know it you means like, I get all the days off. You gotta, like protect our freedom and go to other places <laughs> that you don't want to go to for long periods of time and Sometimes, do shitty jujitsu. Mostly, just means I sweep floors all day. Dude, I got so upset when you left. I was like, man, what if he doesn't Aww. like doesn't come back? And then you gave me a bunch of DVD instructionals, and I was like, <laughs> I mean, was that everybody. like when you thought I like bequeathed you to like, hey man, hold on to these DVDs from 2005 in case I don't come back? Yeah, I mean, but I was like, you left, and you're like, I can lend you these, and I was like, cool man. I was like, yo, if he dies when he's in that place he had to go to for that long time. Like, I would be upset to have these DVDs. Man, just but watch I, them. I did watch them all. And, and reminisce. Just like, oh, so, man, uh, Austin probably does this stuff. Enough about Austin and his, and his veteran status. <laughs> Get at him on July 4th. <laughs> he earned it. Um, on to this Kasai Super Series card. It's, uh, dude, this is an awesome card. This is I'm so excited. This is midweek. I'm on vacation. I get to mm-hmm. just sit back and watch this card, and damn, it is a main card. So the main bangers. card, the main event, yeah, banger. Dante Leon versus Hanato Canuto for 170. I don't think this is for the title. I think Kasai typically only contests their titles at their main their main events, not their mm-hmm. Super Series events. I know Canuto is the champion at 55 and 70. I want to say, yeah, he's lightweight and welterweight champion. Um, we saw Dante Leon versus uh, Mateus Lutz last time we got that Rene choke. It's kind of a little bit of a oh, controversial yeah. match, but, dude, both these dudes bring the pace. Yeah, so, it'll be fun to watch for dude, sure. It'll be dope. I honestly, like, this guy, I could see this going either way. I could see Dante Leon really kind of pushing really with pressure. He, Dante Leon, I think, has a tough time making 170, if I recall correctly. <laughs> he's a big dude. Um, but Renato pushes, they both, you both guys push a pace. I mean, it's super hard to beat Renato, and I could see him kind of edging out a victory here, and that's kind of how I think he's going to do it. But Dante can catch him at any point in time, and he has a real good submission game from the back. Co-main event, we have Celso Vinicius versus Wagner Hosh, also at 170. Mm-hmm. I love watching Wagner. <laughs> yeah, he's one of the best dudes to watch like for these sort of super fight events because I feel like he brings it, and it's always like entertaining. Win, lose, or draw, like 
it's always entertaining. Dude, he's always a fun guy to watch. Like, he just mm-hmm. brings, he brings, again, another guy that, Gasai has a bunch of guys that bring a pace, so I don't want to yeah. keep saying it. Like, pretty much every single person on this main card, even in the undercard, are people that, in quotes there, bring a pace. <laughs> like, this is going to be a fast-paced event. Wagner Hosha is always a dick when he competes, and I love it. He, mm-hmm. he talks about it. He's like, he's like, yeah, I'm kind of mean when I compete. He goes, yeah. I'll apologize to you after, but, like, unless the ref calls, I'm like, I'm going to do it. I feel you. Yeah, but I kind of I kind of respect that, which is kind of why I like to watch Wagner Hosha because he, mm-hmm. he does mean people shit mm-hmm. until the ref's like, hey, you can't do that. And there's the ref like, okay, I won't yeah, do that Yeah, not everybody now. admits it. I mean, tons of high-level guys do it, but not everyone admits it. I, I like how open Wagner is about mm-hmm. it. Like, he just gonna do, he's going to do shit to you until, like, it's not allowed until the ref tells him to stop. It's legit. So I appreciate that. Um, dude, Wagner's hard to beat in super fights, though. So the next match we have Tex Johnson versus Craig Jones at 205. This is a rematch of the EBI 9? Yeah, I think you're right. EBI 9. I think so. I watched this, I watched this match because I got in an internet argument a while back. Like I want to say like <laughs> a month ago. And I watched it. I was like, oh shit, this happened way differently than I thought it did. And um, mm. dude, Tex Johnson's coming off tapping Penna. Craig Jones is coming off uh, Anthony Rumble Johnson. Or No, that's probably the day after this, I think. Or two mm. days after this or something. Tex Johnson did Worlds too. Yeah. He ended up losing to uh, Ali, I think. Uh, I think in the cool, in the Ooh. round of 16, I think. <sighs> You're so, going to catch me on that. I don't man. know which round it was. I'm not sure. But, dude, both these guys come to bring it. Like, this mm-hmm. should be – dude, Jack Johnson brings a pace, and I think he'll pull a pace out of Craig Jones here that will turn this into a barn burner. You think so? I, I think it would be cool to watch two really good leg lock guys kind of like try to work their game against each other at the same time. I feel like Tex has a chip on his shoulder after the EBI match. That's kind of why I think Tex, again, we always see the first thing that Tex does is he runs across the mat at you and tries to break your foot off. Mm-hmm. And like that's what he does. I feel like Craig Jones, he'll he'll get Jones to pull and mm-hmm. then he'll immediately sit on that like um, that straight ankle lock, transition to the heel hook. Craig, tra- Craig is going to like invert and go into saddle from there and then we're getting to like a dope ass leg lock battle. Yeah, that's why I want to see. I want to see, I don't know, it seems like with like more traditional jujitsu guys, when there's like a passer kind of guard player scenario, it's like, eh, it usually ends up kind of going one way or the other. But leg locks kind of happen at the same time as each other, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's like you can just shoot out positions a lot. Yeah. Where it's like one guy, they're, you're both going down your rabbit hole, and one guy's trying to come out of the rabbit hole first with the submission and not also get his shit broken off in right. the process. And don't get me wrong, all the traditional stuff I love, but it doesn't seem to end up the way I think it's going to end up in my head. Every once in a while, you'll get like a low Keenan kind of matchup where like, Typical guard player, really good guard passer, yeah. and it ends up being like this game of inches, and it's really fun to watch, super technical. But with leg locks, it's like almost guaranteed. Yeah. So that that will be a super fun match. Mm-hmm. Under that, we have Misa Bastos versus Talita Allen Carr at 115. I think this is a rematch too. I forget. I don't remember the result. It might have been a Worlds match. I think I think they've met before. I I'm sure they, they have. I think they've met a couple times before, actually. And I, for some reason, I feel like Bastos came out ahead the past – a couple hmm. times, but I could be Who wrong about that. Who did you fight a fight to win? Uh, Alan Carr or Bastos? Bastos. I do not recall. Yeah. Might have been Alan Carr? It was a big name, but I can't remember who it was that might've she'd won Alan against. Car. Might have been Alan Carr? I mm-hmm. don't know. Um, this should be fun. It's, again, these yeah. Bastos have looked really, really good recently, and Alan Carr is hard, super hard to beat. Uh, next match, we have George Patino versus Jay-Z Calvacante. We have Manchurkara versus Enrique Coco. I'm interested to see how this plays out because we've seen a lot of Enrique, and mm-hmm. um, I think you and I were talking before we recorded a little bit that like I haven't seen Mantra a lot, Mantra yeah. Carroll a lot. Yeah, I'm not sure. I wonder. Um, you know, he's doing like kickboxing now. He's doing like is he really? Yeah, he's doing a bunch of kickboxing stuff right now. He's that super, kind of he's super into that. That kind of makes sense, I guess. When uh, he left Marcelo's, it was with Dylan Dennis. Left in quotes there. And, right. I'm, asked, I'm being very he generous. Asked to, he was asked, <laughs> asked to, to leave. leave, like asked slash forced to leave. This is a few years ago now. When I think about um, it, like two or three years ago. Mm, probably less than two. I think. Really? No, uh, definitely not less than two. In, I, in any I case, I feel like I think we were doing the show when this happened. Hmm. I, it wasn't. It wasn't that. It wasn't. I don't know, man. I think it was. I think it was in the last two years. I don't think it was three years. Hmm. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't know exactly the date. But in any case, Asta left Marcelo's. And he's been training, clearly. I've seen, like, photos of him training at, like, really oh, yeah. high-level gyms. But it's like, man, I haven't seen him or heard from him, really. Watch us completely fuck this up, and he's been doing a bunch of other stuff on the side that we've just completely missed. <laughs> I just haven't seen him in, like, big super fights right. or seen him on the podium at big events recently. Right. And uh, Coco I've seen being really active, looking really good. But, man, Mantra's hard to beat. 
Yeah. So next matchup should be a lot of fun. Richie Martinez versus Gleason Tebow at 180. <laughs> uh, we saw Gleason versus Gilbert Dorino Burns at Titan FC. They ran a combat jiu-jitsu match a little bit ago, and uh, Dorino was able to take it over him. We've seen Gleason do some more jiu-jitsu recently. It's kind of cool, but Richie Martinez, we, we're seeing him come off of the Polaris where he, uh, who did he beat? He beat someone, basically someone made a really small mistake and he capitalized on it and got the victory. Mm-hmm. So he's ramping up for stuff too. Should be a fun matchup. Next matchup we have Mateus Lutz versus Vladir Arujo. I can, Arujo. I can never say his last name, 175. Like two things, Ara Ujo. Ara, Ara Ujo. Ujo. There you go. This is going to be dope. I'm calling it. Mateus Lutz brings pace. Arujo brings pace it's gonna be dope this is battle of the dope ass brown belts that should be black belts mm-hmm. watch this match it's gonna be fun next match we have tony way versus john lineker at 155 uh i don't i think i've seen john lineker c- c- grapple before but it's been a little bit i think he was announced for something a while back but he pulled out i want to hmm. say for some reason i think it was like a fight to win or something yeah that, that sounds right a lot of you guys do uh but he, like fight to win i don't think he like did it though i forget stuff. I forget what he was in something recently, mm-hmm. and then but he's on this now, so this will be super fun because Lineker's, dude, he's a top guy at bantamweight right now. Yeah, I don't know what his uh his grappling creds are, but that'd be pretty cool. I think I think he's a black belt. I think he's, oh really? I think he's a black belt. Um, okay. I think in, he was a black belt when he was in I think jungle fights. Still, he's been a black oh, wow. belt for a little bit. I th- Sweet. think, but I could be wrong about that. Um, and I've been wrong about many things before, so it wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't surprise me if he's not. Uh, next match, we have Bridget Grace versus Maggie Girondotti at 155. That should be fun. Sweet. Big fan of watching uh, Maggie Girondotti. She looks really good. She's also on a card that we're talking about a little bit here, Jits King versus Amanda Leve. So I'm super excited to talk about that match in a little bit. Um, next match, we have Ricky Nelson versus Fabiana Rosa at 190. Again, the entire undercard is also there, too. I'm not going to read through every single one of them. Um, names, we have Kevin Gallagher on the undercard. You know what card's good when he was on the undercard? We have Quentin, Quentin Rosenwig on the card as well on the undercard. Um, this whole card is going to be awesome. It's July 4th. All you're doing is hanging out and drinking and watching jujitsu. I'd recommend it. It starts at 4 p.m. Orlando time. Like, spend your afternoon doing this. I highly recommend it. So, under a preview of Submission Underground 9, this event takes place on July 7th. Austin laughs into the mic. The main event for this one is uh, Rumble, Anthony Rumble Johnson, who weighs about 300 pounds right now, <laughs> versus Craig fucking Jones. Weighs all the pounds. Who I think has a match at 205 at Kasai, like two days before. So, mm-hmm. Craig is weigh- weighing about probably like 215, 218, mm-hmm. and uh, Rumble's going to weigh, give or take, 300 pounds. <laughs> I-, I still think Craig gets it done. Yeah, I do too. I mean... It'd be one thing if uh, Craig was like this crazy top heavy, like pressure passy Kanan sort of character, but he's not. So, I mean, I think he's going to rip Rumble's leg off. I would assume. I mean, again, Rumble's an underratedly good wrestler. Like, we saw him oh, beat yeah, he's a Phil Davis wrestler. up. Yeah. You know, and like out wrestle Phil Davis, and Phil Davis is a pretty impressive wrestler. So, For sure. it wouldn't surprise me if Rumble, like, if they, if Craig decides to stand, I don't know why. I mean, is he, he going to submit that. him, though? Like, you see Rumble submitting Craig at all? No. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't, I don't see Rumble's path to victory here aside from like literally if he can just like either injure Jones via mm, like a sprawl or something like some that. Some crazy slam or something. Or like, yeah, or like a lifting slam or something like that and like get him that way. Other than that, I see Craig Jones going to saddle, mm-hmm. getting that heel hook meet and taking it home with him. Yeah, I think I think Rumble's probably too out of his depth with a specialist like Craig Jones on legs. So. It's also like Craig Jones is smaller by 80 pounds, mm-hmm. but he's not like it's only 80 pounds. Right. For like a guy at the top of his game right now going to ADCC, been at ADCC, been at that highest level, like 80 pounds is a lot of weight, mm-hmm. but we've seen Craig do absolutely. We've seen him fight big guys before. Like, man, it's a, it's a rough matchup. Yep. So also on this card, we have, man, that is very small font. We have Fabio and Scherner versus... Uh, Gabriel Gonzaga. Mm-hmm. Um, I have not seen Gonzaga compete in a little bit, but he's he's on stuff. We've covered him on the show a bunch of times on Fight to Win and other stuff yeah. before. Um, Scherner is a big dude, hard to beat. Gonzaga is a big dude, hard to beat. Both of them have real high level experience. I think yeah, Gonzaga, both veterans, both veterans, both a little older. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I'm, this is actually this actually should be a potentially should be a good match. It's a good matchup, but it I think it's going to be a little slower. Scherner likes to slow guys down. Mm-hmm. And um, Gonzaga has slowed down since he got older, but he's still got top level grappling. Um, I think Gonzaga probably gets this done, but I'm not super confident in that pick. 
Yeah, I don't know. I've not seen either one of them grapple in some time. But then I th- I know Scherner is uh I think that's like Chael's jiu-jitsu coach, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, it is. It is. True. Yeah, so Scherner's GB guy, Chael's under him mm-hmm. um, and out of uh, in Oregon. Also on the card is Micah Bakerfield versus King Kevin Casey. So it should be a fun event. It's on Fight Pass. Yep. Again, runs really well. Watch it. So under our preview for Jits King in Tampa, we did an interview with the promoters for this organization. Uh, that will be literally right after this preview section, so listen to it. It's really cool. We go into some of the rule sets and some other things that, you know, kind of the standard grappling rewind questions that we ask. When we do interviews, we're looking to do more of those. Really thanks a lot to those guys for the interview. It was uh, very insightful. Um, they talked to me a little bit before the interview as well about some of the commentary staff, who they're looking to have. And it was, again, I'm really looking forward to the additional and the future events that these guys are going to run. And this inaugural event is awesome. Headlining, we have Dan Martinez versus John Combs at 190. That's a good match. John Combs going to ADCC 2019. He won the trial spot for the North American trials. Uh, Yeah, I think that's correct. I'm I'm so bad with like Austin's. Look, the Austin's things. just like looked at me and nodded his head like, yeah, that, that's <laughs> correct. Yeah, I like look at the ceiling a lot with main test stuff. I'm like, uh, yeah, I think so. We recently saw him versus Lepre. He cut down like 160 mm. to fight Lepre, and um, Lepre, you know, did well against him in the worlds. Yeah. Uh, on the un- the match underneath that, we have a match that I'm super excited about. <laughs> Nick the Show Pony Rodriguez versus Jason Ray's at 2:30. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised Nick can make 230 right now. I Last time I saw him, I thought he was bigger. He might only be 230, but mm-hmm. uh, he towers over me every time I speak to him. <laughs> so I'm usually excited to see his progression. I haven't seen him lose anything recently, but it's like... I haven't seen I, anything him lose. The last thing I think I saw him lose was the East Coast Trials. Mm-hmm. I think it's the last thing I saw him lose. Yeah, that's Dude. super fun to watch Like a pretty good wrestler... Like, use that skill set to take him pretty far in jiu-jitsu. Dude, and then looked, also, as he's learning more jiu-jitsu, it makes him more and more fun to watch. Dude, he looked like a monster at Polaris. Mm-hmm. Like, versus Ash Amos. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, shit, he got some new tools and some new stuff. Again, Jason is no joke, though. He's a legit dude out of Florida. Man, it's it's a, it's a tough matchup, but Rodriguez has looked better every single yep. outing in that run-up to ADCC, so it is a tough matchup. And then on to the next matchup, the matchup that I'm – Almost one of the mo- most excited about this entire card. Amanda Levy versus Maggie Girondotti at 160. This is the rematch from the finals of ADCC West Coast Trials, um, where Amanda Levy was able to hit a fall down arm bar over Maggie Girondotti at the very beginning of the match and get the tap. This is going to be good. Mm-hmm. I'm super excited to see this one. Maggie, I think, is competing earlier on Kasai, I think a couple days before. So she's going to be ready. She's local i think she's out of the orlando area at cyborg's gym at fight sport so again not not that far of a drive for her maggie uh, andy's coming down with nick and smash pass jay jay regal budo um on this card so this should be a really really fun rematch i've absolutely no idea how this one's gonna go but yeah, no clue it's gonna be a banger though yeah but both ladies you know have legit subs and you know are dangerous in every single area next matchup we have jose Give me the names. Why am I reading the names? <laughs> figure this out a fight to win that you're wavering at the you names. You start me like the tough ones, though. Jose Laguer versus Valdir Araujo. Yeah, I can't say Valdir's name, man. Mm. At 170, again, Valdir, back-to-back events. Got it. You know, Kasai on the fourth and then this on the sixth. Next matchup we have... Andre Porfirio versus Kevin Gallagher. Again, Kevin Gallagher, back-to-back events. Kasai and then this. Again, it doesn't, help, doesn't hurt that both of these events are in Florida. So uh, this is awesome. Next matchup... Daniel Kelly... Versus Mariucci Yaguno. Yaguno 125. Me. Next matchup, we have Mateus Alves versus Kent Allencorn at 195. We also have a 16-man, 165-pound tournament as well. Uh, you read through these names because I'm going to butcher all of them. Okay, let's knock these out. Mauricio Gomez, Igor Feliz, Jason Hayden, Spencer Mume, Pablo Lavaselli, Orlando Castillo, Jake Ferrara, Werther... I think it's Ferrara. Okay, I didn't throw accents on it. I didn't put a little extra stank on it, but let's continue. <laughs> Werther Marcialis, Jay Ciotti, Emilio Hernandez, William Tackett, David Canis, Jim Ellers, Matthias Machado, Enrico Coco, Scott Colton, Giovanni Carvalho. Yo, you could have could not have read that more monotone. Yeah? 
Yeah, like Enrique Coco. You were like you want to read it again? You were like, I can try. You were like the robot voice, Enrique Coco. That's just my voice, man. I know, man. But like, spice it up. There's no spice that in ex- my voice. That excitement. So, dude, I'm so <laughs> excited for this event. This yeah, is gonna be an sweet. awesome weekend of jujitsu. So stick around for the interview. I'm gonna put it basically right here on the show. Um, the show's gonna come out in like 20 minutes now, so I gotta edit that really quickly. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it was good. So how you doing? We got uh, Eddie and Enrique here from Jits King. Going to ask a couple questions and basically talk a little about their upcoming event. You just heard the preview that we did, so I'm going to throw it to you guys. Uh, I gave you a couple questions before we did the uh, the recording. So what are the rule sets for the event? Well, um, we've adapted a modified version of the ABCC rules. Um, by that, I mean we took out some elements to it. Um, we took out the, the clean sweeps and the clean takedowns. Um, and we also, um, we're not going to penalize our competitors for pulling guard. Our goal is to keep it moving, uh, keep it engaging, get the action right away. We want our competitors to, to move in and, and then just do their thing. The first three minutes uh, during the qualifiers are going to be no points. The last three minutes are going to be points. If for some reason we come to a draw, it's going to come down to a rest decision. Awesome. Um, so for the qualifiers and for the, the, the semis, um, we are, are using a six-minute rule set. Um, for the super fights and for the co-main event and for the finals, we're using eight minutes. The first four minutes will be no points, and the last four minutes will be points. Awesome. Yeah, you guys allowing uh, for slams out of subs too, or did you take that out? Uh, no, um, it, you're allowed to slam. Awesome, I'm a, I'm a, our whole team is a, is a big fan of the slam, so I'm happy that you guys uh, no, you guys kept that in there. Yeah, no, we we kept the slams. There's there's no way we're gonna remove that. You know, we just felt that um we would eliminate the the, the penalties for pulling guard because uh, in my opinion, uh, people don't want to go see a lot of bad wrestling. They want to go see a lot of great jujitsu. So we want to get it engaged right away. Outstanding. That sounds like a really, really good plan. So you have some awesome grapplers on this card. We just kind of did a preview of it a minute ago, and I want you to talk about um, what are some of the matches on this card that you guys think that we should pay particular attention to, you know, as you watch the event? Uh, man, it... You have one match on here that I'm really interested in. I'm really interested in the uh, in the rematch between Amanda Leve and uh, Maggie Gear and Dottie. We saw that at the finals for ADCC trials, and like I think it's fell through once, so I'm really happy that you guys are putting it on. Well, that's an awesome match, but in my opinion, you can't get any better than, than Nick Rodriguez versus our own Captain America. Captain Don't underestimate that guy, man. He is motivated. He's got dad strength, and, man, he's a handful. Um, so I know Nick's a specimen. Don't get me wrong. He's a phenom, but but we're not going to give him an easy, you know, e- easy way out here. He's going to have to compete. He's going to have to earn his uh, his win. That's awesome. Um, and um, again, you know, I'm, I'm partial to kids because I love the way they move these days. So our first match is two kids that are phenomenal. These 12, 13-year-olds are awesome. One of them has a record of 157 and 27. So look out for Lucas Gonzalez and Ty. Lucas Gonzalez. Ty is a killer, man. These kids are going to put on a show. That's awesome. So you guys looking to do additional events after this event? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yes, our plan is to do two this year. Our next one is hopefully going to be in Orlando in December. And then next year, uh, we're going to do four events. Then we're going to go on to eight events. And then hopefully our goal is to have 12 events a year. Uh, but, you know, you know, first we're focused on the first one for obviously – and, and, you know, we'll go from there. <laughs> That's real reasonable. I always like to ask that question just to figure out, you yeah. know, in the future, if I'm looking, if I need to keep my eyes open for, you know, upcoming events and more. Um, is there anyone else in, in future events, if you can talk about it, that you're looking to get on the card in the future? Anyone in particular that kind of slipped through or a particular grapper that you guys would like to feature on Jits King? Well, I'll be honest with you. We turned down a lot of big names for this tournament. Okay. And it's just because we were focusing on those up and comers, and uh, we were trying to get these Florida boys really good matches. That's what we've been trying to do, you know, and that's what we're going to continue to do. Anywhere we go, we're going to get the local talent, and we're going to find monsters for them, you know, uh, to compete against. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be good, but we definitely turned down some really good names, 
and we'll probably have them compete in the next tournament. That's awesome. So how can everyone watch your event and when is it? We're going to be on flowgrappling.com. Okay, and it's going to be on July 6th. Uh, doors open at 5 p.m. Show starts at 5.30 p.m. Uh, we're going to have a great time, man. I can't wait. We're excited. We're ready. Uh, we're dotting, dotting those I's and crossing those T's right now. Uh, I'm driving my buddy Nux over here. <laughs> Just not going over the same exact thing over and over and over again. So I'll probably get choked out a few times before uh, July 6th. We'll see. That's awesome. Hey, I really appreciate y'all's time, and I'm really looking forward to your event. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate practice you. Practice this morning, and then practice again this afternoon, so running on very little sleep, but it's okay. Jesus. So what's your week look like? Uh, Other than, like, watching jiu-jitsu and doing jiu-jitsu? Watching jiu-jitsu, doing jiu-jitsu. I'm going to Wisconsin on Wednesday because that's where my girlfriend's family has, like, a cabin thing. You so. coming back for the weekend? Yeah, of course. Because... We have a belt test, and I'm supposed to be getting my brown belt, provided that I don't fail stuff because we're one of the last schools that, like, has actual tests. It's an actual test. Yeah. You know? That's some new shit that we started doing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you want to go the, the third round, I think, of guys yeah, think that ever go third that? The third iteration of, like, an actual curriculum having to be, like, done and, like, spoken to. Yeah, you like, you got to do these and this and, like, prove that you can put up and show up. Yeah. So, uh, that'll be exciting. I didn't know if you want to talk about that at all, but I pushed mm. you to tell it anyway. It'll be fine. Uh... I'm just like last minute studying kind of for it. Just like, hey, let me borrow you as a practice dummy. I would do this and then I would do this and then I would do this. But so, it's, it's a little nerve wracking. It's, it's an exciting time. Yeah, so it's going to be a good weekend for you. Yeah. And then we're going to do after the belt ceremony. We're probably going to like have some jiu-jitsu on as we like eat food. Yeah, it'll be it'll be sweet. So it's going to be it's going to be a good week. So as always on the show, I'm your host, Maine, with my co-host, Austin. And we got the Grappling Rewind. We'll see you on the mats. If you like the show, please consider sharing it on Facebook with the folks at your gym. It's the best way that we grow the show and we really appreciate it. You can reach out to us on email. We also have Instagram. We have Facebook. We have Twitter. We have Google+. Plus. Until that shuts down. We have a website. If you have an event you would like to have us cover, please let us know. If you have a name, like most people do, and you'd like to have us stop butchering it, let us know. Reach out to us. The show is also available on YouTube, Spotify, in addition to iTunes and every other podcast service. We very much appreciate your time and thank you.